And hello there, teachers. Welcome back to another episode on Teachers Help Teachers. I'm Esther Yoon, and today with me, our guest host is Lauren Manning. Lauren, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for inviting me to be on your program. (laughs) So Lauren is a fourth grade teacher, and uh, she's been teaching uh, in education for about 12 years now. She's taught grades K through four. She has a master's in STEM curriculum and instruction, and she is STEM certified with NASA Endeavor. She is an LMS champion, meaning that she's an expert on the platform, platform, excuse me, on Schoology. (laughs) And I I must have, I have to add this one little thing. Lauren doesn't know about this, but I have to uh, credit Lauren to single-handedly bring me, take me from old standards and into the 21st century, new standards or common core standards or our NGSS standards and made me, started to really develop me, help me develop into a 21st century teacher. So I am deeply, deeply grateful for Miss Lauren Manning for, um, for being such an inspiration and and uh, she's younger than me, but I consider her my mentor. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> because, uh, <laughs> as you can see, the wealth of knowledge and expertise and training that she has under her belt. So thank you, Lauren, for being here and being um, such a important part of my career as a teacher. Yay, Lauren. Okay. Way to embarrass me. Well, you're like, hey, do this favor for me and also let me embarrass you. So, great. <laughs> it's the truth. And anybody who knows you and is open to, to listening to what is – anybody who's open to listen to what you have to say will definitely agree with what I just said. So, thank you, Lauren. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's really kind. Lauren, um, I brought you here because – Um, LA Unified specifically, and I'm sure other schools out there, decided and purchased um, us, this this, uh, district, to use Schoology. Will you tell us more about that? Um, So so just as a disclaimer before we go into this today, um, I... I definitely know that there are other platforms out there that people are using. Um, I, I love the platforms that are out there. Google Classroom, Seesaw, all of those are fantastic platforms. Um, so I, I just wanted to um, just say Schoology is not my favorite platform, right? Like there's many things that I don't like about Schoology. I like how I'm saying that. And then I'm also going to show you how great it is too. But, you know, I I just want to be honest that um, a big reason why I started using Schoology was because our district said, here's this platform, use it, right? And so um, that's why I chose to use this platform. And also, um, like many of you, I just wanted to use the platform that my students were already using in the classroom before schools shut down. So I didn't want to teach them anything new that they hadn't been exposed to. So that was another reason why I I continue to use the Schoology platform even from home. But basically, Schoology is, um, we know it as a grade book, right? Because it's connected to um, our, it's where we, put our grades where the district wants us to, um, you know, put all the grade information and then they connect that to our report card. And up until this point, to be totally honest, that's basically what I was using the platform for. And so, you know, because of all this, silver lining in all this is I really had to dive into using Schoology and figure out what I could use it for with my students. And, um, I've been pretty happy so far with what I've been able to do with the kids. So, yes. So as Lauren mentioned, um, many of us do use it. We 
maybe strictly for grading, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, the possibilities are much more than that. And I would like Lauren to show us that. So will you showcase the features, the, the, uh, the possibilities of, of making uh, or using Schoology for remote learning? Yeah. Um, so is it okay, Esther, if I share my screen then? Please. Okay. Uh, also, just something you should know right here and um, something that I actually really recommend to all teachers out there is I actually have two screens in front of me right now. Um, so I have my computer and then I have an extra screen that's connected to my computer. And so if I start to look at two different places, I'm, I, I'm still with you guys. I'm just moving things around on two different screens. And this has really helped me with all those Zoom lessons. I have my students all on one screen and I'm able to control them. And then content is in front of me on another screen. So if you have a friend or family member that has an extra screen, I highly recommend using two screens um, during this time. So just a little FYI in case I'm like looking everywhere and you're thinking that this lady's crazy. Um, <laughs> Oh, I, I need permission to 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 share my screen. Oh, okay. Um, so if you just want to make me a co. -host. Okay, so um, I'm sharing. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, usually it has like a big green thing around it, but it doesn't have that for right now for some reason. Um, okay, so I have two windows open with you guys. Um, I have my screen, which is what I see as a teacher when I log in. And then I borrowed um, my one of my students <laughs> login um, pages. And so I'm looking at her screen here. So I'm going to I'm going to switch back and forth because one of the great things about Schoology is um, I'm allowed to do um, a lot of things on my end that then students can't see. So mm -hmm. For example, you'll see, well, just to backtrack, one of the great things that I've been able to do with Schoology, um, and I'll scroll down so you can see that, is just the way that I've been able to organize assignments, right? This is a really confusing time. Parents um, are overwhelmed, the kids are overwhelmed. And so what I've tried to do with Schoology is to make my students independent learners um, and, and make my organization and assignments so easy for kids to access that they don't have to bother their parents and they can just take care of it themselves. That's, that's something that I've been really trying hard to do um, because parents keep explain, expressing to me how overwhelmed they are. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I've really tried to make it easy for them. Um, so you'll see in my, on my page, I have, um, old weeks um, in a folder. So this is all the way back from March 23rd. Um, and so all those um, assignments from that week, I have inside that folder. Um, everything is inside here from that week. So they can go back and find it really easily. Um, some of the things that they were working on during spring break, that's all inside there. Mm -hmm. um, these are the past weeks. This I made, um, and I'll, I'll talk a little later about this. This is, um, we left school right when we were talking about missions. Missions is a really big part of fourth grade um, social studies. And so I was still able to complete mission projects with my students, the report, the poster, and the presentation all on Schoology. Um, and so you can see, the, this is how I left this open for you guys to see. Um, this is what students look at for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So, um, and you can see this is unpublished mm -hmm. because I'm already starting to work on next week's plans, um, but I don't want them to see it yet. I only, un I only reveal one folder per day. So again, so that kids don't feel overwhelmed. They can just focus right on that day's work. And then um, Schoology also allows Zoom, the, the kids to access our Zoom meetings right from the Schoology page. So it's password protected automatically. Um, and so that kind of gives me a, a, a safe, safer feeling um, 
in Zoom. Sure. Yeah. Um, do you want me to open up one of these folders so that they can see what's inside? Yes, thank you. Okay. So um, inside um, any given day, I'll have the assignments. Um, and you can see that I'm, I'm using different icons for each assignment. Mm -hmm. So this little page with a pencil is called a page. Um, and that just doesn't have an assignment attached to it. It's just a page where I can just write information. So you can see here, um, we'll listen to the morning announcements together. That's something that my school video records every morning and then we listen to. Um, and just a little reminder, make sure you're sitting at your table, uh, ready to take notes, finish your breakfast. Uh, some of my kids thought that this was like a time to eat breakfast and I really had to tell them like, no, we're, this is this is school. It's a, a new type of school, but it's school. Stop chewing uh, at me. <laughs> I'm sorry? Stop chewing at me. Yeah, it, it's, you know, that's all we're doing here. Um, and so, you know, any reminders I have for the day, we're, we're working on this Oregon Trail game right now. So I wanted them to have their paperwork ready for that. And I attached it here in case they didn't have it so I can attach things. Um, and then we've been using Flipgrid. So I posted the Flipgrid um, for that day that they could log right. in. And say, hmm. I have a question. That's interesting how you went under materials to insert a page. Um, why not under updates for those announcements? You mean this right here? Yeah, so like, um, you know how um, if you go to the to the left side, you know how you have materials up to, yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. how come, um, l let's say announcements weren't under updates. Mm. So I, I never used this update section. I know that there are people that are using um, this section of updates on Schoology to kind of type up what, you know, post what they should be doing. Mm -hmm. Again, my goal was to make it as easy as possible for the kids. I didn't want them going back and forth between right. everything. And, and I don't know, for me as a kid, if I open up a Friday folder mm -hmm. and I see, I see everything right here and it's almost the way I set it up as a sequential order of what I want my kids to open and do. So yes. I want them to open up their morning announcements. I want them to go into math. I want them to see what the assignment is. Everything is right there for them. Then I want them to go into the reading assignment, yes. do the reading assignment. I, I, I really tried uh -huh. hard to make sure that everything was right there for them and they didn't have to go searching. And I, I hear a lot from, you know, kids sometimes like, well, I didn't know where to find this and I didn't know what section this was. And I really just wanted to avoid any of that. Good point. Um, so then my next question about that, materials generates a grade normally, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, so how do you not generate? Is, do we just... So, so that's, that's the difference between when I'm using just these pages mm -hmm. and then when you can see this kind of icon, which mm -hmm. means that there's a grade associated with that. Um, so, for example, if I'm just having them work on pieces of writing throughout the week, mm -hmm. um, but, but they're more sharing it with me on Google Docs and I'm not giving it a grade yet, okay. then I won't, I'll use a page uh, and I won't okay. use an assignment. But okay. on this particular day, the informative writing was due and so they're turning in their writing right here and then I can look at it and I can open it right here. So this is mm -hmm. a student's writing, um, and I can open it right here. So I taught my students how to link their Google Docs yeah. to Schoology, yeah. and so they're able to take their Google Doc that they've been working on and, and submit it right to me. Um, I, I give my feedback on Google Docs to my students, but you can also um, revise and add notes right here on their um, writing. So if I wanted to, I could have, I can add a note right here. Um, and I could, I could type something about um, her opening here, right? And I can yeah. send that right to her. Right. Um, 
So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, I can also give them feedback right here um, in like as a post and then they can type back to me. Um, so the student is teaching me about ice cream. Um, so information about adopting pets. Um, so, so I like that it's all kind of submitted right here um, for me. And then another thing that I've been doing for my students is I can upload, um, I can't teach everything uh, in Zoom. So what I've been doing is I've been videotaping myself teaching. And so I'll post the writing lesson on that page. It's, we're still looking at that Friday folder, that writing lesson. Um, so everything is there for them. Examples, um, help with closings, because that's what we were working on that day. My writing lesson videotaped. And then right here, I have two other videotapes that I um, have for them about how to submit a Google Doc as a Schoology assignment. So in case someone's like, Ms. Manning, like, whoa, 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 I forgot how to do it. Well, well, watch the video. It's right there in the Friday folder. So yeah. anything that they could possibly need to know about that one assignment, yes. I have posted right there for them. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So yes, you really um, thought this through where you're making everything, placing everything in one folder yeah. um, under materials where you do have that option to make it a material or a page. Yeah. So that way they're not going through any other tabs that's that's wonderful and 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 even in science you know we, we've been working on um body systems yes. um and everything is right here so yeah. the read work pass codes to get into our read work assignments the video of the you know teaching i i made a, a safe youtube because the sometimes youtube videos don't work for my students on their chromebooks uh -huh. so i've been using safe youtube then the brain pop videos associated with that system so i'm really any student who's even not computer savvy just click just mm -hmm. click on the file and and it should take you i don't want them going to brain pop and what did mrs manning want me to search right, right. for in brain pop i'm really yeah. trying to keep it organized and and it's a lot it's it is harder for me to to do all of this and um but i think that it is it's going to be easier for the kids, yeah. which is going to make it easier for the parents. Right. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of a decision I've made here. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, so before I go on to our next question, mm -hmm. was, was there anything more that you wanted to share of all the uh, possibilities of? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. um, so I'm super proud of my kids in this mission project. I, I just have to really? highlight a little bit about what they were able to do. And, and I keep telling my kids, you know, this has been a really great um, experience for them um, to kind of get a little bit more, more comfortable with the computers. You know, mm -hmm. us as teachers, we're getting more comfortable, but the kids are getting comfortable too. So I, I just have to praise my students for just a second. I'm sorry. But um, so they turned in their mission reports yes. okay so you can here's all their mission reports in here um and so just like we did before um they 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 linked their google doc yes turned in their essay right yes. so here's their essay on the mission right okay so they did that then they had to do their poster so <laughs> then you can see here they all submitted um, posters and um, this was, this is another really cool thing that Schoology can do. Um, you can take a picture directly from Schoology. And so all they had to do was just hold their, this is a poor example of, of that, but all they had to do, and, and of course, this is an example of where it didn't work so well, right? Because you can't see, she's like trying to take a picture and it's blurry. So it's, it's not always perfect. Um, but so here's, hopefully we'll get one that you I can actually it's see. It's fault. I think it's the person taking the picture, right? Totally. Or it could be the camera, the web camera. Yeah. So here's an example of the 
the poster that a student was able to take a picture, upload it right to Schoology. And then again, I, I, I have the report requirements. I have a video of how to upload photos on Chromebooks. Then I also had to upload photo using Macs because everyone's using different devices. So it can't be too easy for us teachers, you know, it's <laughs> craziness. Um, and then using this little um, discussion feature, mm -hmm. they were able to post yeah. their presentations wow. and they are, um, they are, I, I'm going to have to blur a little bit of this, but you know, right from there, they can, they, they, they were able to give their presentation to each other and other kids could watch their presentations and they were so proud to post their presentations for everyone to see, you know? And they like or comment. Yes, they can them. like and they can comment on them. Um, another example of where we were using that discussion feature is um, we were, my class has been pretty obsessed with um, the uh, Rover 2020. Mm -hmm. that's going to be launched in july we've been following this story and we went to jpl and and saw um uh the rover in the clean room and so we've been obsessed with this by the way it was named perseverance oh so <laughs> not only is that just an awesome name but i keep referring back to this idea of perseverance because yeah. as we all know with technology and all these changes I keep saying to them, you know, kids have kind of broken down in tears with me and, you know, we say like, okay, we're going to persevere through this. So, you know, we, we keep talking about that, but let me show you. Um, so, so anyways, Mars 2020 Perseverance is going to have a helicopter going with it to Mars. Um, <laughs> so cool, right? And so we did, let me see if I can find the assignment. We, we designed a paper helicopter. And so we made the paper helicopter using a lesson from JPL, um, JPL's education site. Uh -huh. um, and so we did that together. We made the helicopter, but then they had to change their helicopter yes. and retest it. Yes. So here you can see students talking about what they did themselves, um, how they changed it. You can see at different kids are some kids posted pictures of how they changed it. Um, other kids posted videos of how they changed it. So if while we can't, you know, completely have the collaboration um, that we used to have in the classroom, mm -hmm. we could, you know, they're able to comment with each other and post discussions here and videos and um, that, you know, is, is super nice for them also. And, and I would argue that, no, this is still collaboration. It yeah. definitely can be, but just, it just looks different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and I think, you know, just like we teach kids how to respond to each other in the classroom in person, I think, you know, one of the things that I've really been trying hard, and that's one of the reasons why I'm using Flipgrid also, um, is that, um, they're not great at responding to each other here, you know, so you can see I'm trying to model um, that for them and I'm responding to them, but they're not really responding to each other. They used to in the classroom respond to each other a lot more, but I think because they're so overwhelmed with trying to finish the assignments, they're not necessarily taking the time to respond to each other on these um, assignments and that's something that I'm, I'm working with them right now on. Got it. Yeah. Um, oh, I wanted to say something about this, but um, it slips my mind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, oh, yes. So you, you generated a discussion um, after posting the pages and materials, didn't you? I, I posted, I'm sorry? You generated a discussion right there, right? Um, yeah, and and we after they were able to do this assignment at home, the next day when we came back together um, through Zoom, mm -hmm. we were able to have that that discussion live on Zoom too, and kind of wrap up that assignment together. Um, so yeah, very nice. Yeah. So Lauren, um, I wanted to. Um, 
uh, ask you about um, student engagement, right? Or rather how they can share um, their learning, what they practiced um, with you through Schoology, the, the features on Schoology. And mm -hmm. you've shown us um, a bit of that already. Yeah. Is there anything more that you wanted to add to that part? Where the um, are sharing. Um, well, one thing that's um, one thing that they're able to do. Um, that's something new. An, another way that they're showing their learning is. Um, let's see. How can I show you guys this? Um, so you can see right now we're we're doing a we're we're trying to do a novel study right now. Um, we're reading by the Great Horn Spoon because now we're we're talking about gold Love rush. Love that book. Uh huh. I, I've never read it before, so I, I've been huh. enjoying it, reading yeah. it with them. It's fun. Um, yeah, and so well, another way that they're able to show, and and this is one way that I haven't been able to just like throw everything out the window. Um, I already had all these. Um, questions ready to go for them and you know in the classroom I would have printed them out and made a packet and they would have answered the questions as they went along yes but now I can't just make a packet for them and a lot of my students don't have um, printers at home so another great thing you can do with Schoology is I can attach things for them in Google Drive mm -hmm. and then they're able to access it through their Google Slides so I'm going to open that up for you. I'm now looking, I'm, I'm looking as a student, looking at their document. And so right here in Schoology, um, it opens up for them. And you can see that um, I had to help them connect their Google Drive. Um, but you can see here, this is just a PDF that then I, um, I'll just try to zoom in a little bit more so you can see. Um, it's just a regular PDF, just a PDF that I, you know, had already gotten or bought from Teacher Pay Teacher, like everyone else. Um, but I added these little text box um, to the bottom of it, um, put it on Google Slides, shared it with them, and now just like they would in the classroom, they're able to answer the questions right there and turn those things in. So. Um, so again, I'm able to use the same documents that I already had. The kids don't have to print anything. They can show me what they're learning from reading the book. And it's all right here in Schoology. I give them an automatic grade for it. Super easy. Um, but, you know, the biggest thing that Schoology has given to me, I think, mm -hmm. is the ability to communicate with my students all the time throughout the day and they know how to ask their questions and get their questions answered. Um, at the beginning of this, I was trying to communicate to the parents and then have, you know, the parents relay the messages to the kids. Right. And I found that the parents, some parents are still working out of the house. Some parents aren't checking their messages anymore. I mean, it's complicated, right? So I had to figure out a way to talk directly to my kids and teach my kids where they could find me. So that's where this little envelope on top um, has really helped me. And so, you know, I'm able to send, you know, a little announcement to them. Hey, everyone, here's the Oregon Trail paperwork. Coach Marty just uploaded a video on Flipgrid. This is the orchestra teacher. I'm able to relay that message. Um, that's, you know, that's there. Um, here's a student who's like, um, here, where is, where are we finding things? Here's a student who, um, is, she's actually figured out a way that, and this is how my school, the, my kids recorded and sent videos. Mm -hmm. If you press on this little audio yeah. video recording, they can send me an audio recording or an audio and video. So this student is t sending me a picture and she's saying, um, you know, something's going on, um, what's happening. And then, you know, she, I'll, and then I say, can you show me a picture of what you have? It sounds like what you have right now is fine. Mm -hmm. I'm able to send her message back. And that's not with the parents. That's not with, the, you know, grandma, grandpa. It's directly with the student. And I'm helping to answer their questions. Um, and you can see it's like, 
you know, it's, here's, it's a lot of questions that's been happening going on with all this, but, um, they don't have to go through their parents. Yes. Yes. Um, and I, and I remember earlier in this episode, you were talking about how to cultivate, grow an independent learner. And you're, you're definitely doing that where they have that using Schoology, where they have that direct link to you um, yeah. and you have to them. So wonderful. Um, so Lauren Manning, could you take us or bring us back to um, uh, our side-by-side -side view? Oh, yes. Yeah. I will Thank you. stop sharing. There we go. So teachers, everyone out there, um, that's Schoology for you, that it, it is more than just a grading tool. Um, and, and I do love that part of, of it, but it is much more than that. It is a place, another platform, uh, but as Lauren Manning pointed out, it directly links, it's, it's a full encompassing hub for, um, for us teachers and for our district to, to have, to generate grades. But again, more than that, to reach out to our students, for them to connect with us, and not just in text, but in video, audio, pictures, um, the possibilities are there. And, um, and the way Lauren uh, organized each file for each day of the week was very, very streamlined and easy to use. Um, so thank you for that. that <laughs> so Schoology, um, so, um, that's, that's there for us too. And, um, and if you've already, and many of us have already started um, using various platforms, but in the beginning, uh, year uh in the fall mm -hmm. uh, of of 20 and 21 this could be a, a possibility for us yeah. uh, so thank you for showing us yeah and and another thing i would just say too is um you know i, I think a discussion that we're having at our school and 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 discussions that i think are going to continue to happen as this new world of remote learning maybe continues maybe doesn't is thinking about um what platforms our kids are using across, you know, from year to year. So I know right now at my school, third grade used Google Classroom, fourth grade used Schoology, fifth grade is split between Google Classroom and Schoology. So what is that like as a student? Uh, how can we make the progression across grade levels and across platforms from year to year um, easier for them so that they're not constantly relearning new platforms every year? I think that's uh, a really difficult discussion that might start to happen across grades in schools um, because, you know, it's hard. It's hard work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, there, you know, it's great to have options and yeah. various platforms but yes um continuity is also very important so mm -hmm. i think um that's going to be not just between colleagues to talk about but our, our administrative leaders yeah definitely but, yeah so thank you lauren manning for your time thank you, and thank you for showing us schoology yeah. and uh join us again for teachers help teachers for another episode and i hope you found this uh, very useful. Goodbye, Lauren. Bye, everybody. Thank you.